Thunder Force is a Netflix original superhero comedy film starring Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer. It was released on Netflix on April 9, 2021. The movie is about two childhood friends gaining superpowers to battle superpower villains. The film was written and filmed by Ben Falcone, Melissa McCarthy's husband. Filming had started and wrapped in 2019, but was probably pushed back due to COVID, I believe. A lot of people said they hated the movie, but in my opinion, I liked it. So let's get into Thunder Force. In 1983, a cosmic event bathed over the planet Earth, giving people with sociopathic behavior with superpowers, naming them miscreants. In Chicago, 1988, we are joined by Emily as she has lost her parents due to a miscreant attack. She vowed to get justice for her parents. She meets a new fan while attending public school named Lydia. Over their 10 years, they bond, but they fall out due to Emily didn't want any distractions by trying to figure out ways to fight the miscreants. We jump to the present to Lydia witnessing an attack from a miscreant known as Laser. Lydia catches a TV broadcast of Emily that she has not been seeing in years, unveils her new company, Stanton 4.0. She goes to see her and they catch up, but while Emily had to tend to an important matter, Lydia accidentally gets injected with a serum that Emily has been working on for years. However, the process has already begun, so she has to continue. While Lydia is getting acquainted with her new surroundings, it is revealed that Emily has a daughter named Tracy, and she is a child progeny graduating from Stanford at the age of 15. Emily starts taking a series of pills to gain the power of invisibility. After a month of training, the two are ready to go on their first mission with code names, The Hammer and Bingo, as the team Thunder Force. They stop a convenience store rivalry orchestrated by the crab. Lydia and the crab share a brief moment of chemistry before he leaves. The city has been thankful for Thunder Force stopping miscreants all over. One of the mayor candidates, the king, is a miscreant and is using the crime wave to get him elected. He confronts the two at the Stanton building, hoping that they would join, but of course they don't. Later on, he loses the election and to show of good sportsmanship, he decided to throw a party for the new mayor. Later, Thunder Force is attacked by Laser and she gets away. Lydia gets carried away and throws a bus trying to stop Laser but misses. Lydia and Emily get into a disagreement and they both go their separate ways to cool off. Later that night, Lydia meets up with the crab to get information on what the king is planning. He tells Lydia that the king plans to use the party as a ruse to blow it up to the people that didn't vote for him. Lydia makes up with Emily as she returns with the information. They split up, but is double-crossed by one of their own. They are again attacked by Laser and they fight her off. They make it inside and begin to fight the king and his goons. Tracy shows up with the power of super speed, giving them the edge they needed to stop the king. They find the bomb, but there was not enough time to disarm it. Lydia takes the bomb and jumps into the river as it explodes, but she survives. The day is saved and the Mary wants to have an official arrangement with Thunder Force by signing the Sokovia Accords. Just kidding. In the mid credit scene, Lydia and the crab enjoy a second date as they eat raw chicken due to the side effects for their powers. I like Thunder Force. I was literally waiting to see when it was first announced and showed the first look. My initial thought that it was both from a distant planet trying to right the wrongs of the creation of miscreants, but I'm okay for what I got. The idea of the cosmic big only affecting criminals was a unique approach of the story. Just think, for over 30 years, the miscreants caused trouble and law enforcement probably barely fought them off or detained them. I wonder why the military didn't step in to deal with them. Why was it solely on Emily? You'd think it would be the only time that martial law would be welcome. But I guess it was something that the world had to deal with just like we had to deal with COVID. Now since the world is kind of going back to normal. Emily's purpose she gave herself by making these powers for herself initially was very brave even though she could have chose someone she could trust with the powers and she could have been a mentor of sorts. Her relationship with Lydia was pretty strained when they were teenagers because she felt that Lydia was holding her back so she didn't mind not being on speaking terms for over a decade. But by the end she knew Lydia would always have her back and, her be and be her best friend. Emily never found out who actually killed her parents years ago. I really thought it was Laser but it was not even hinted or mentioned. Maybe it will be saved for a sequel, if there is one, to better develop her character and test her to either get vengeance or justice. She does have an estranged relationship with her daughter, Tracy, due to her being just like her in every way. Emily knows that she should spend more time with Tracy, but Tracy reassures her that she is a good mother. Lydia is the go with the flow, tomboyish act that made the, her powers fit with her personality. She goes a little overboard at times and sometimes doesn't know whether or not she's kidding about personal or financial gain. However, she has the heart of a hero and does the right thing without thinking twice. Hell, she even convinced the crowd to come to the side at the end. The king is like an every typical villain hiding behind the scenes. He throws to pretenders like a three-year-old when you tell him that they can't have juice. 
This guy should have been slipped up a long time ago. His power is pretty neat though, super strength and durability like Lydia. Honestly, I did like the movie, but I felt that the training montage was drawn out too much. That was the only thing that bothered me. I really hope there's a sequel in the next couple of years. I really want to see how the world of Thunder Force develops. It will be interesting to see our heroes will experience miscreants outside of Chicago. But that's all for today. Like always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and see you all next time.